is it possible that the Cowboys that we know, you know, for so long have been pedigreed, like, you know, as a playoff team, it, are they not a playoff team this year? I will buy this a little bit because we saw the Cowboys come out hot, right? We saw them come out hot week one. But as I was kind of thinking about it, like my main argument was, obviously I want you to give your points, but my main argument was, well, this team has largely been together, right? Like they didn't make these huge changes in the off season. Like we actually kind of critiqued them for not doing much in the off season, right? Like they signed CD lamb, they signed Dak Prescott, but then I was thinking about it. Okay. They just lost week two, almost came back against the Ravens. That's a whole nother story. But, yeah, that, that certainly <laughs> but I was thinking about it. It's like, okay, of course they're going to do well week one and week two. All these teams that did make a lot of changes in the offseason, like they're trying to get the rhythm down. For the most part, outside of the defense that is now run by Mike Zimmer, like they know what's they know what the deal is. Dak Prescott and Mike McCarthy, they know what the deal is. And Honestly, that offensive line is playing very, very good. Much better than I had anticipated. But, well, I, let, me, let, me, let me refrain. Cooper BB and Tyler Guyton are coming on quicker than I expected. Let me say that before I say their offensive line is playing great. I think when we got to week three, right, and we saw the Ravens kind of jump out to a lead where it's just like, okay, the Ravens have this game. And I think the Cowboys coming back, it has more to say about the Ravens than the Cowboys, you know? I'm like, well, maybe now that other teams are kind of getting their groove, we're not going to see what we saw from the Cowboys week one and week two. Maybe we're not going to see that the rest of the year. And maybe they could make miss the playoffs because that running back room is a mess. It, it really is a mess. So, no, look, you touched on a lot of things that I don't even have written down. So I'm glad you touched on those points. So, but again, so we haven't even gotten into the points here, Cowboys fans. Let me, let me get into why exactly that I think the Cowboys might be a playoff team this year. And again, I don't, again, I, you know, this could be panic, but as of right now, these are the stats we're working with is the stats we got to discuss. So let's start with the offensive side of the ball here. We are looking at a, mi a minus 0 0.12 EPA yards per play on offense. We are looking at a minus 0 0.16 EPA per pass, we are looking at a minus 0 0.04 EPA per rush, which is actually interesting considering the rushing, the running back situation, but we'll get into that in a second. We're looking at a dismal 73.7 rushing yards per game, which is just in the in the era of today's football, well, that that I mean that is dismally low. And it's not even right. We could it's not it's not just the running back room, it's also the run blocking right now. But again, we'll get into all that in a second. 39 pressures allowed, which is the 11th highest in the league. However, they are passing the ball at a 68.7% clip, which is second, you know, second highest in the league behind only the Raiders. But what I think is interesting about that, again, is you're passing the ball that much, and we're still looking at minus 0 0.16 EPA per play on, on the pass plays. So we're not passing the ball efficiently. And we're dropping back almost 70% of the time. We're basically letting the defense know, well, seven out of 10 snaps, you can expect to pass. And that's not a good recipe for right having a team off kilter to say. And we'll move on to the defense here next because the, the offense is not really the problem with this team. Albeit that the offense isn't playing very good. We all know that the offense at this point is far and away not the problem per se with the Cowboys. It's the defense. 37 or three is 37, 372 point seven yards per game allowed, which is the fourth highest in the league behind only the Rams, Colts and Raiders. 12 touchdowns allowed, which is the highest in the league. We are looking at a uh, plus 13 plus 0 0.13 EPA per play allowed, which is the third highest in the league. 187 passing yards per game allowed, which I wanted to bring this up because again, that's not even that bad. So they're 19 league, 19th in the league in that metric, which is not bad. Like that's actually relatively good during the top half of the league, and as far as that's concerned. But where it's a problem is we're looking at a 185.7 rushing yards per game allowed, which is the highest in the league. And again, so like kind of let's tie it together. You're not running the ball well yourself, you're not managing the clock yourself. But on the other side of things on defense, you're letting teams run all over you and you're letting them take total control of the game and total time of possession away from you. 
call it for what it is. That's by far the far away the biggest issue with this entire team right now. You can actually you can marry the two together and realize the biggest problem right off the bat. But to finish off here with the, my points on the Cowboys, we're also looking at a plus zero point two seven EPA per rush allowed. And then on top of that, Horrible. we're looking at a QB pressure rate of 40, which is the fourth highest in the league. So again, that's a good thing. You know, as far as pressure goes, right, the, the this D line is still getting pressure. They're still doing their job as far as the pass rush is concerned. But again, you know, I always like to say, Hunter, if you if you can't make it where you get to third down, it, it doesn't matter how good of a pass rushing group you have because you have to be able to stop the run in the first place. That's the story of the Cowboys right now. And I think the problem with that is, again, this hasn't been a problem for so long. For a very long time, the Cowboys have been able to very much marry together what they do in the run game and then in the pass defense. And we see how that it made a very productive defensive unit. Well, all of a sudden, we got to say, and again, I was gassing after week one. Like you said, it came out hot. But all of a sudden, a lot of questions are not only about Mike Zimmer as the play caller, but Mike Zimmer in terms of how his personnel groupings work with this Cowboys defense. Do they even have the right personnel? I know that's a lot of the questions around the Cowboys right now. So I'm going to leave it up. To, I'm going to leave the rest to you here, Hunter, and I'm going to I'll go off what you say. But you tell me what you're thinking as far as all the information I just gave you. So right now, the Cowboys are the third most scored against team in the league, and they are the fourth highest scoring offense in the league. So it's kind of not complimentary football whatsoever. And I was kind of when you talked about, you know, not rushing the ball efficiently and also the fact that they're getting ran all over, I was thinking, you know, the time of possession has to be swayed pretty heavily in the opponent's favor. But that's not the case. The only game where the Ravens, the Ravens had the ball 34 minutes and 45 seconds to the Cowboys 25 minutes and 15 seconds. But when you go to the Saints game and you go to the Browns game, they're all within like a minute or two of each other. So like they are having equal opportunity to score, which I guess you could say if, you know, that that bolds worse for the defense, right? Saying, you know, we could tie like, 200 because I'm actually really glad you brought that up. Cause I don't, and again, I, I appreciate you fact checking me, but I think what I want to say is, and this is where, where you, you'll agree with this. The problem is though, the reason they're having that that fair amount of time possession per se is because they're letting teams march down and score so fast that that's that, that it's like okay well they went down and it scored in a two minute drill in the middle of the first quarter you get what I'm saying here like well that's I think that that, that we could say that that is glaringly the reason now that I think about the Cowboys, it why the, the Cowboys time possession is that is relatively even are dead last in run stuff percentage which means tackles for no gain or for a loss they're at six point eight percent. The next team is 9.9%. Teams are running the ball against the Cowboys at the third highest rate in the league at 55.4%. They know this is an issue with the Dallas Cowboys, and they are abusing Mike Zimmer. They are taking Mike Zimmer out to the 50-yard line and spanking him on the Dallas Star. It is embarrassing for Dallas right now. No, and you know, here's what I want to add to Hunter, because this this is definitely crucial information. And let me be crystal clear about this. Every Cowboys fan is very aware of this. But perhaps to everybody who has been paying super close attention to the Cowboys, let it be crystal clear where where this gashing running defense, where, where teams are able to run all over them. Well, the problem is their last year's first round pick, Mozzie Smith, who that they drafted to be the root of this defense to be the guy that was going to hold down the a b gap to be the guy who can you know, multi-gap and, and just hold his gap so these linebackers can come fill it well mozzie smith's getting pushed off the ball every single snap right when the ball's right when the ball is hiked and and again he's he's the the big guy in your defense and then next to him right we got osa we got osa oh i always i always butcher his last name but osa Uda, I you know i'm sorry i always <laughs> right mispronounced the man's name but why it's interesting to me is because last year he's actually coming off of a really relatively really good year. Like last year was a really good year for him compared to the first three years of his career or first two years of his career, like third year last year, really good year. Well, this year, again, how do Mike Zimmer's playing him? Well, in, in the gap alignment he's in now, he's getting pushed off the ball, basically not at the same clip as Mozzie Smith, but man, he's getting pushed off the ball quickly. You have your two interior guys that you need holding down the A, B and C just getting blown off the ball. And then your edge rushers can only do so much. Micah Parsons also, if really what it's worth, is really the only guy holding his weight on this D-line at this point. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence is having kind of a, just call it for what it is, kind of, he's kind of having a mid-year so far, unfortunately, this year. And again, you could kind of, though, I think more anything, contribute it to the fact that now 
the gap alignment is different than last year. You have guys in different spots and, and they're just not playing up to standard, whether it's the Mike Zimmer or whether it's that they're not used to it or the way it's a combination of the two of both of those things. It's the reality. And why it's interesting too, is look, as far as linebacker play goes, right? The linebackers aren't playing great ball, but they're not playing bad ball either. Like, like Damone Clark, he's grading a 71.5, 71. 71. 15 out of 77 linebackers. Right. Eric Kendricks is it basically a 70 if we're rounding up by 0.1, 21st out of 77 linebackers. Maris Loff, who's having a rough year, but again, he's a rookie. I didn't really expect him to come in hat, right, hat on fire and, and to be an amazing linebacker right off the bat. Right. He, he's one of the weak links on the defense, but it's almost to be expected when you're starting a rookie out there at that position. It kind of is what it is. Right. So all that to all that to say, Hunter, you could attribute it to the D line. Yeah. The, the interior D line is where it all starts to fall apart because everyone else can only do so much when the two guys that need to be holding down a B and C are just getting blown off the ball every snap. So I, I was looking at a couple stats um, just because I was curious to kind of see how this defense, like how they're running the defense and how teams are beating them. Right. So the Cowboys have allowed 17 runs for 10 plus yards, which is tied for first in the league with the New York giants. And I was like, okay, so where are they getting beat on the inside or the outside? So the teams are actually running the ball at a league last 31.1% inside the tackles against the Cowboys. They are running the ball at a fourth league clip rate outside the tackles at 63.1%. So I'm like, okay, they're running outside, right? You maybe want to go not stack the box, right? So it's like everyone's kind of inside. You want to, you know, spread your defenders out a little bit. Well, the Cowboys are running the fourth highest rate of stacking the box at 31.1%. So I go, okay, you know, they're packing everybody in there, right? Yards after contact, they, so the Cowboys are last in the league. They allow four, 4.02 yards tied with the Giants, you know, their division rival, for yards allowed after contact. So it's a tackling issue. Teams are just running on the outside. They can't stop them. And being tied with the Giants in defensive categories, which is crazy because if you look at the Giants' run stuff rate, I mean, they're not great, but like... Where are they? Where are they? Well, here, while you're looking, oh, while you're looking, I want to add a little bit of context too, because no, what you said, I'm really glad you brought up too. And but I want to tie twelve run stuff, right? Why it why it still matters? Because a lot of people are probably sitting there saying, well, you know, if Dobbs just went on his whole spiel about how the interior is getting blown off the ball, but not running up the middle, why does that matter? Well, here's why it matters because, and as as you know. The bottom line is this: when your two interior guys are getting pushed off the ball, well, what can ha- what happens after that? What happens is, is the guards are pushing to the second level immediately. So we don't have to instead of Mozzie and Osa getting in the backfield and making our guards have to back 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 door it backside it. It's the complete opposite. They're getting pushed off the ball. We can push to the second level immediately, and we know that those second level defenders are the guys that are going to be containing the edge. So when the guys that are going to be containing the edge are getting blown up because the guys in the middle can't hold their weight, that's exactly what we're seeing. And honestly, to that point, Hunter. And I want why it makes more sense is yeah, up, up the middle, when the linebackers are playing good ball, they're still gonna fill their gap where those those gains, albeit that yeah, they're getting pushed, the interior's still getting pushed. When the linebackers are filling their gaps, it's still not gonna be for the most humongous gains in the world. But when you can run outside, everybody else is getting pushed off the gap immediately, and we're pushing the second level and we're going horizontal. Well, then we can just block at an angle and we know what's gonna happen when a guard is blocking, a good guard is gonna be blocking any any linebacker an angle. They're gonna be they're gonna win the block a lot of the times, right? Bottom line. So I'm really glad you brought that up because I want it makes sense so we can tie it all together for everybody. The problem it, it starts in the middle, but it it, it carries over to, to the horizontal yeah. and to the edges. So yeah, Dobbs, I'm kind of buying the Cowboys might not be a playoff team this year if this defense keeps it up. No, I think, and if you even how about this, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but I think that Cowboys fans are already kind of on the same page. This could even be the type of situation where, again, you know how a lot of people in the NFL feel about him. This is not me speaking out about how I feel about him. This is anecdote that I've received from, at this point, dozens of NFL sources and people that have played around him in his in his scheme on his teams. All right, call it for what it is, Hunter. People like to say that Mike's, or Mike Zimmer is kind of hard to get along with he's kind of disagreeable he's kind of a rough around the edges as they say so you know we might be looking at a situation where look if heads are really clashing and we know that mike mccarthy's not gonna be the first one out could this be the type of situation where we see a defensive coordinator get sent to the door at mid-season or some point later in the season i don't think so i think honestly 
if this year doesn't work out very well, I think they'll probably, they might clean house just on the coaching front. No, I think you're definitely spot on about that. Look, the pressure's on Mike McCarthy to let it be clear. I mean, every Cowboys fan is aware of the, all this, the pressure's on the entire staff, but man, oh man, again, for right now, it's just, it's only week three. We're going into week four, but you know, it, look, I'm not saying I'm panicking, but I'm hovering closer to that button for the Cowboys than I am for the Niners. Let me tell you that.